Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I'll show you how I take my kiln, add thermocouples and a Raspberry Pi so that I can get notifications when the kiln is up to temperature. There were three stages to this build. I built the cart, I fabricated the board and did the programming, and then the last stage was to wire everything up. Before I actually got started building this project, I did as much as I could in software. I used Fusion 360 to model the cart, and I used KiCad to develop the schematic and board layout for the Raspberry Pi interface board. The Fusion 360 model as well as the KiCad files are available on Makersize.com along with a write-up that gives you a little bit more information about the Raspberry Pi and software configuration. The construction of this cart was inspired by Bob Claggett from I Like to Make Stuff. He built a welding cart that's very similar in construction to this cart that I'm building for the kiln stand. So if you haven't seen his video, check it out. I'll link it in the cards as well as down in the description. Some of the pieces weren't exactly the same length, so I used the shorter piece as a reference and then I either cut or ground down the pieces so that they were all of uniform length. Then I attached them to the sheet steel by welding, and then I welded the vertical supports to the base. I put the top on and tacked it into place. After tacking the top and bottom sheets into place, I went back around and made permanent welds about two inches long. After I had all the welding done, I used my angle grinder to grind down the welds. I just tacked on the casters using the welder. And then I had to go through and clean up the weld spatter that stuck to the metal using the side of my pocket knife. I applied a coat of primer to the whole thing and then I went back and applied a finish coat as seen on Instagram. Like I mentioned earlier, I used KiCad to design the circuit board and I printed it out and fabricated the circuit board in the same manner that I did for my previous video about automating my garage lights. At the same time I implemented this kiln into OpenHab, I also converted the garage lights to work with OpenHab. I found out about OpenHab after the garage light automation video from watching Make Magazine's video. Um, they were doing a NeoPixel LED controller based on OpenHab, and I thought, wow, that software looks pretty slick, and it really is. It's, it's uh, pretty powerful from what I can tell, uh, and it wasn't too bad to set up. It took me about a weekend to do all the configuration and setup for OpenHab. The board has a thermocouple to serial interface chip that provides the temperature to the Raspberry Pi, and it also has a dedicated output to drive the relay which switches the kiln on and off. I programmed a quick Python script to let me know that the thermocouple was working and I used my soldering iron and I also blew on the thermocouple to verify that the temperature was making it to the Raspberry Pi. I crimped on pins to be used in headers and I made a harness to go between the Raspberry Pi and the I.O. board. I picked up a 40 pin header from Fry's and basically it has these teeth that cut into the insulation of the wires. And then I got started coding. I made cones to hold the thermocouples out of plaster of Paris and play sand, and I used a transparency sheet as a mold. Once the mix was ready, I packed it in around these insulators. These insulators come with the thermocouples, and they're basically some type of ceramic with holes down the middle. I pulled out the thermocouples and let the molds cure. It's so smooth. I bent the thermocouple and installed it into the cone. Initially, I put the ambient thermocouple at the top of the kiln. Haunting Creations. Glenn Felpel. Paul Arbor. Centurial Inc. And the classic Myford Boy tutorial on the pyrometer. All inspired the design 
for this particular crucible pyrometer. I use the same technique as boring the headstock on the Gingri lathe to bore out the center of the gouging rod. This will be the shield for the crucible pyrometer. Doing this by hand seems to lower the risk for breaking the rod, but your hands will be filthy. I drilled and tapped a hole to secure the thermocouple to the tube, but it didn't work so well. I got this contraption from a coworker, and basically what it does is it charges uh, these two capacitors up to a certain level, and then it uses this SCR triggered by this little toggle switch to dump all that energy. I'm going to try and use this to weld these thermocouples to the thermocouple wires, and that way uh, when they're in the kiln, they're nice and secure. I dropped the pyrometer down into the crucible and threaded the thermocouple wires through. I mounted the components in the electrical box and I used hot glue to affix both the Raspberry Pi and the I.O. board to the box. I wired up the internals on the bench and then I took the box over, ground off some paint and welded the box to the cart. I drilled holes for the cable clamps and grommet for the thermocouples, spilled my cutting fluid in the process, opened up the knockouts in the box, stripped back the insulation on the cable, stripped off the insulation from the wires, landed the wires on the terminal block, and then I attached uh, into the cable. I threaded the thermocouple wire and used a magnet to make sure I got the proper wires connected. That's because one of the wires is magnetic and the other is not. I buttoned up the cabinet and then adjusted the bottom thermocouple. Then I played around with OpenHab. I implemented a simple thermostat, but ended up just going with the notification in the end. I measured out a specific amount of aluminum. I did that with the hopes of doing some calculations about the temperature rise versus energy input after the melt was completed. I hooked up the kiln to a retractable extension cord that I have. It's rated for 20 amps, but after about 20 or 30 minutes of running the kiln, the circuit protector on the end of the cord got warm enough that I think that's what put it over the edge. Anyway, it tripped off. I rolled the kiln back inside the garage, plugged it directly into the wall, and finished the melt. One of the coolest aspects uh, to this project, I think, was watching the temperature of the kiln until it got to the melting point of the aluminum uh, and it pretty much hung out there for about 20 or 30 minutes before continuing on up to that notification temperature. And the reason that it stays pretty much flat and you have to keep adding energy is due to what's known as a latent heat of fusion. And that's energy you have to add to a substance to get it to transition from the solid phase to the liquid phase. The thermocouple you could see overshoot just a little bit. I think that's just because the ambient temperature in the kiln was above that melting point. But as the aluminum melted, you could see the temperature of the thermocouple come back down to that melting point of aluminum. I thought that was pretty cool. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you liked the video, click the like button. More detailed information is available on makersize.com. Follow me on social media for real-time project updates.